What's going on everyone? Thanks for checking out this video. And I know some of you might be e-bike shopping, but have you considered an electric trike? That's what I want to show you today. This is the Mooncool TK1. And it's a 20 by three inch tire, a 48 volt battery system, a 500 watt motor. It's rear wheel drive because it's hooked up to a rear differential. And don't let that 500 watts fool you. It's actually very powerful. I checked the website this morning. It goes for $15.99. And if you look in the description below, it should be a discount code there for you to save up to 200 bucks on this trike. You do have multiple color choices. In addition to the white, you can get green, gray, orange, and cinnamon pink. So there should be a flavor there to suit your style. And everything you see here is included in the purchase price. This comes with the rear rack, the front rack, the front basket, and the extension piece that allows you to put your headlight here in the front. So this is all included in the $15.99. Now that you know the basics, let me show you all the components up close. All right, folks, here is the TK1 from Mooncool. And before we even get started, I gotta tell you, this thing gets a lot of attention. Everybody that saw me ride past in this thing was doing a double take, and I had people stopping their cars, rolling down their windows to talk to me about it. So it's certainly a head turner. You don't see these electric trikes all that often, around where I live anyway. So it grabbed a ton of attention and it was so much fun to ride. But anyway, let's start talking about some of the components on it. You've got 20 by three inch tires. So it's sort of a fat tire, definitely not a skinny tire. I think it was a good choice because it still feels nimble, but the tire still feels like it gives you a good footprint. So I like the three inch wide tires. It's a quick release on the front wheel. And then you've got hydraulic disc brakes, 180 millimeter star union disc brakes. Now you've got triple brakes on this trike because obviously brake disc on the front and then the rear disc is here in the middle. So it actually brakes both rear wheels as well. When you lock up the brakes, you do a, a double skid mark in the back. So you've got all wheel braking and the Star Union, I love the Star Union brakes. You don't see them very often on bikes, but they work really well. I like Star Union, so no problem with the braking system. Smooth, quiet, great stopping power. You do have a front suspension fork. I'm not sure if this SUS is the brand name. I don't see any other branding on it. And it's got a lockout feature on the top. So it's either free to spring or it's locked out. There's no fine tune adjustment to it, but you know, hey, it, it did its job. It soaked up the bumps. I didn't have any problem with it. This trike comes with fenders, front and rear. They're metal fenders. Yeah, and they're, uh, you have to install the front one on setup, but the rear one's already on there. And mine, unfortunately, took a little bit of a hit during shipping. It's a little bit dented up. And I mentioned that the Mooncool, they said they'd ship me out a new fender when they were in stock. So if that happens to you, I'm sure they'll do the same. But the setup on this bike is pretty simple. It's about 95% assembled when you get it. The only things I had to do were put on the front wheel. It's quick release. You just drop it in the forks, put on the front fender, put on the front rack and the front basket. It just goes on with four little bolts right here. It's really easy. And I think that's it. <laughs> it's all just folded up in the box because this is a folding frame trike. So it's folded up in there. It's almost all assembled. You're just putting on those few little pieces and you're up and running in no time. Now this front basket's pretty big. I'll throw up the dimensions on the screen for you, but you mount the rack first to the bike here and then you mount the basket on with these four bolts here onto the rack. So you could remove the basket and just have a front rack there if you wanted. They give you the little pigtail to extend your headlight out to the front of the basket. It says on it that it holds maximum 18, is that 18? No, 13 kilograms. So I don't know what that is, like 27 pounds or something like that. And the rear rack looks the same, they match. Pretty big, again, I'll put the dimensions on the screen for you. It does not have a weight rating on the rear rack at all, but I know the, the entire bike, I think the load capacity is 350 pounds. And we sort of tested that out. You'll see in the, in the footage where we had, uh, I put some people in the back <laughs> rack, which you're not supposed to do, don't do that. But we were testing out the capacity of it just to see how it would ride, did just fine. But the front and rear racks match, they look nice, and it's a ton of cargo capacity. If you're looking for a cargo bike, I think this might be the way to go. Not a cargo bike, a cargo trike is a, probably a better way to do it. Because look at the way that this rear thing is mounted. I mean, there's this big, huge frame underneath this basket. So all the load is spread across this rear axle. It's, you can hold a fair amount of weight in there. Now, I mentioned that this is a folding frame. You can see the folding mechanism right here. And I've got a video of me folding this trike. And it's kind of awkward at first until you figure out how it collapses in on itself. You got to release that folding mechanism in the middle. The front wheel kind of spins around and tucks behind the rear wheel. And then you fold down the handlebars. And I mean, 
the folding feature is great, but here's, I guess my main note on that is it's not small when it's folded up. It's still pretty darn big. It's still probably going to be a two person lift to get it into some vehicle. And I suppose you could make it smaller by, you know, taking the handlebars out of the stem, maybe taking the front basket off, taking the wheel off, the seat out. You could really kind of condense it down, I think, if you need to fit it into an SUV to take it across the country or something. But I guess my main point here is it's not super small when folded. I wouldn't be buying this to fold it on a daily basis and take it to the park to ride it. I mean, even when I took it to the park, I didn't fold it up. I just put it in the bed of the truck and loading it was not crazy easy. I was able to get it done myself. I'm pretty able-bodied. This thing weighs, I think, 94 pounds. So it's not extremely lightweight. And the problem is you want to grab the hold of the rear rack with both hands and kind of lift it up, but the handlebars are flopping over on you. So you got to find a way to hold the front wheel straight. Again, it's more like a two person job. One person to hold the front wheel straight, another person to lift the back end. I got long enough arms that I was able to, you know, get it in there myself, just holding the handlebars and then coming out, I attached a kind of a bungee cord on the front of the handlebars to hold it straight so I could back it out of the truck. So I got it in and out myself, but it wasn't the easiest one I've ever done. Now the TK1 has a complete lighting package on it. Of course, headlight here at the front. And then I got a video clip showing you all the lights in the back. There's quite a few lights back there, one on each fender and one in the center under the rack. It's got tail lights, brake lights, and turn signals. And the turn signals are on that light that's in the center of the bike, not on the fenders. But great lighting package, it has everything you need. Now let's take a look at the handlebars and the controls. Handlebars, of course, fold. And then this also allows you to adjust the height of the handlebars. And then up here we've got the mirrors I put on myself. These are just cheap mirrors from Amazon. So those don't come with the bike, but you get rubber grips, a half twist throttle. Here's your turn signal switch right here. And then a horn button. You got plenty of room up here to mount other stuff, phone holders, whatever you need. And then I'll turn your display on so you can see what that looks like. Clear, easy to read, simple display. Got your speed really big, your battery indicator there. Right above it is like a power meter. And then your pedal assist levels just have these little bars that go up like that. You got five levels of pedal assist. And then if you toggle through this menu, it's your odometer, your trip meter, the battery voltage, which is going to give you much better reading than this power bar is. And then you got the current, which will show you the controller current riding around. Most of the time I saw it about five, six amps on the current. And then if you get it under stress where, you know, you're asking it to give more power, it runs it up to like maybe 18 or so amps I saw, and it's a 20 amp max controller. And then I don't know what RM is. This just read zeros the whole time. It never had a reading. I don't know what that one's for. And then the last one's ride time. And then you're back to odometer. So very uh, easy to read, simple display off to the side. There's not much to do programming wise. I mean, I went in and I tried to adjust the top speed. It didn't really let me go any faster. So you can adjust things like the backlight and if you want miles or kilometers, and that's about it. And for your seat, they give you this big, huge, wide seat. It's 11 inches wide. It's super thick and plush and soft. Absolutely amazing. That is the type of seat that should be on an electric trike. It was so comfortable. You've got room here if you want to put in a suspension seat post, but honestly, I didn't even feel like I needed one. That seat was really, really soft. And it goes nice and low. The minimum seat height was 29 and a half inches. I had my wife get on the bike. She's five foot four. She had no problem sitting on this trike with her feet flat on the ground, which is how she likes to ride. She wants to get her feet flat on the ground. She has struggles with the larger bikes I get that are, you know, the seat height's like 34 inches. She can just get her toes down. This one, feet flat on the ground, no problem. Great ride position for her. I really think someone five feet tall could ride this. And if you think about it too, all you need to do is just get on it initially because once you come to a stop, you don't have to put your feet down. You don't have to worry about teetering on a tall seat height and getting your feet to the ground. You don't got to put your feet down at the stop. So this is kind of ideal for someone who is shorter um, that can't get on a lot of these electric bikes. But 29 and a half inch seat height is really, really low. And the step through height is about 16 inches to get your foot over that bar. Right behind it here is the battery pack. It is a 48 volt, 14.5 amp hour battery pack. And it has a controller right here that's like integrated into the battery cradle. 20 amp max on the controller. Uh, in terms of range, I did a range test on this and I rode 
mostly throttle only, relatively no pedaling. And this from full charge to completely dead, unusable power was 28 miles. That's what I got out of it. I weigh 180 pounds. So if you're heavier, your range is gonna go down from that. And I live in a pretty flat spot. So if you live in a hilly area, your range will be less as well. Now for the gearing, I mean, truthfully, I don't even know how many teeth are in each one of these cogs. I don't know if it really matters. Here's what I can tell you. The bike is geared so that the rider can help on the hills. When you're on flat ground going 15 miles an hour, you can't keep up with the pedals. They're just spinning so fast. When you're on the hill is where they become useful. Anything over like 10 miles an hour, your pedal cadence is really fast. And I don't think I'd really want to mess with this just given how the rear motor is set up with the differential. I don't know if I'd want to change out any of these components here. So you've got your chain ring and then there's like a little chain tensioner thing here where you can, I guess, adjust the slack. And then it's connected right here to the rear hub motor, a 500 watt motor. And that's this side. And if you go to the other side, if you can get down in here where you can see, there's a, let me also come onto there. There we go. Let's go this side right here. You can see that the, there's another chain coming off this side of the motor, which goes back to the rear differential, which is an interesting little system having a rear wheel drive trike. It's phenomenal. I mean, it, it worked brilliant. I had no trouble with the drive system at all. It works perfectly. It's the whole point of the differential is so that your wheels can spin at different speeds. If you're making a really hard turn, the outside wheel's gotta go a lot faster than the inside. That's what the differential does, right? And it distributed the power perfectly. I didn't really have wheel slip or skidding or, or nothing funky going on. It worked perfectly. I was really impressed with this whole rear differential system. I've never tried a front wheel drive trike but I've tried a lot of all wheel drive, regular bicycles that have a motor on the front wheel. You end up getting just a ton of wheel spin. And I don't like having my drive motor on the same wheels that are steering me. Cause when you are trying to hit the gas in a turn, you get a lot of wheel spin. You don't want that front wheel to kind of slide out from under you or not have traction. So, I mean, I, again, I've never ridden a front wheel drive trike, but I gotta believe that the rear differential system like this is probably the way to go. All right, so that's all the main components of the TK1. Now let's take a look at some of the performance footage I took. All right, hill climb test on the Moon Cool. We test all the bikes right here in the same spot and the 750 watt bikes will go up this hill in about 22 to 25 seconds. This is only a 500 watt bike, so maybe slower than that. I don't know, we're gonna find out. Let's see uh, how quick it is. Three, two, one, go. Off to a pretty decent start. They say on the website that this is 500 watt peaking at 750. I mean, we're cruising right up this hill. No pedaling for me. I think they're underselling it a little bit. I feel like this is stronger than that. That felt stronger than 750 peak. If I had to guess it, I'd say we were right near that 25 second mark. That was quite strong. Uh, for being 500 watt motor, that went a lot easier up the hill than I thought it was going to. Testing out our Star Union brakes coming back down this hill here. It's a little bit curvy. I don't want to get going too fast. You really gotta, I mean, we're going 17 miles an hour. Oh man, you really gotta lean in the turns here to keep it on the road. I mean, we're going 20 miles an hour. All right, let's uh, do a brake check here. Wow, that was nice. I like these brakes. I like Star Union brakes. And it's triple brakes on this. Both back tires stop because the disc is in the middle there. So you got three wheel braking on this. And they've been great. I mean, they're quiet, they're smooth, they work. All right, I brought up my cell phone GPS here so we can do a top speed test. Throttle only. It's been hitting around 15, 16 miles an hour, but let's see what we can run it up to here. Right there, that's it. 15 and a half. 16 on the GPS. So 15, 16 miles an hour is gonna be your top speed throttle only. Same if you pedal. Uh, you don't go any faster if you pedal. The pedal assist is cadence based and it's speed based. So pedal assist one will take you to like eight miles an hour, two to 10, pedal assist three to 12, just keeps going up. And once you're hitting about 10 miles an hour, 
your pedal cadence is faster than comfortable and at 15 it's just you're pedaling like a madman so the gearing is really set up for helping you on the hills not for pedaling over 10 miles an hour basically this thing is just it's built for low speed operation it's so nimble at the low speed i mean it's nothing to just like bust out a u-turn boom you're going 180 just like that so it's meant for low speed not for speed demons this is i just want to relax in cruise this is like an e-biker's dream really because you never have to get off the seat you never got to put your feet down at the stops and the seat is so plush and comfortable i don't even feel like i need a suspension seat post at all you could put one on here if you want there's plenty of room the seat goes way down it goes down like almost 29 inches so it goes super low but i don't feel like i need a suspension post it's so soft the handlebars it's not a reach to get to the handlebars at all they come right back to you they can go up and down they're adjustable i mean it is really a low speed comfort cruiser with incredible cargo capacity you want cargo capacity forget a cargo bike this is what you need as long as you don't have to scoot through narrow passageways then this is the way to go for carrying cargo i mean 350 pounds i think is the capacity of it and i've had full-grown adults in the rear basket <laughs> and it didn't there was no problem I gotta tell you, this one's probably gonna be hanging around in the garage for a while. I don't think the wife would ever let me get rid of this one. We had way too much fun with it when we took it to the park. Now, I would not say that this is for off-roading at all. And I don't mean things like this, where it's just bumpy ground. This is totally fine. You'll do this no problem. What I mean is stuff where the ground is uneven and you're gonna be pitching to one side or the other. Then this thing gets pretty sketchy when you're on ground that's not level i don't mind the bumps like this is totally fine but man if you get to the point where you're on a a really angled surface you just feel like you want to go over and you can go over pretty easily but we're going to go through this trail just because i haven't tried it yet let's just go see what this is like i think it's mostly level we're going to find out just some big roots and stuff in it through the sand oh yeah really bumpy roots how do i tackle these with a trike um i don't want to get too angled i guess it goes straight on that's the thing you have to tackle everything like head on this is oh man how am i gonna do that this is really bad right here i'm gonna go high side and just lean oh okay whoa oh yeah see <laughs> i mean I'm leaning pretty heavy here. So I'm saying anything level is fine. Bumpy's fine. Angles, angles, you really got to hit them head on. Now there's one thing I want to show you, these little ramps that go up and on the sidewalk. If you hit them at an angle, it really kicks you to the side like this. Whoa, you could easily go over. <laughs> you could easily, easily tip over. It's better to hit them straight on, just know that. The first time you do that and it really kicks you to the side, it's kind of, kind of scary yeah like that let me uh show you how you want to do it i guess come in and it turns so sharp you can just basically go in a right angle come straight down way easier all right we've got a nice big downhill coming up here this should be interesting this is not a bike that inspires a lot of confidence at really high speed <laughs> just the way it handles and let's see how fast we can get it to go though I'm just gonna let it coast. We're going straight, so it shouldn't matter. I don't need to make any turns. What are we at? 18, 19, 22. I think we hit we hit 25. Let's lean in the turn here. That's yeah. You don't want to go much more than 15 miles an hour on this thing. I mean, 25. That felt super fast. <laughs> I wouldn't want to make, try to make a turn at 25 on this. I weigh 180 pounds. What happens if you weigh significantly more or you decide to carry a lot of cargo with you? So I went home, I'm back the next day at hill climb. I went home and I grabbed my two 50 pound dumbbells. So I put 100 pounds in the basket and I'm gonna do the hill climb again. And I wanna see if this trike can even make it up the hill with an extra 100 pounds. So I start right here. Punch it up to pedal assist five, so we got full power. All right, we're gonna do throttle only for as long as we can. Ready? Three, two, one, go. 
it's okay. That's I'm in, kind of impressed already that it took off that easily with the extra hundred pounds. So climbing the hill, same hill at 280 instead of 180. I don't know if it's going to make it the whole way throttle because it gets steeper right up here. But right now it's under its own power cruising along. Right here it starts getting steeper. You'll see it slow. So it's slowing. I'm going to let it go. I'm not pedaling. I'm going to let it keep going because we stop right up here at this mark and stop. <laughs> I mean, I'm impressed. I, I'm still shocked this is only 500 watt motor because it seems way more powerful than that. When I saw the specs, I'm thinking, okay, 500 watt motor, peaks at 750 on a heavy trike. You know, it's gonna be weak. It's, it's, gonna, ha it's gonna feel lacking in power. It's not lacking in power. It, it just isn't. It has pretty, pretty darn good power. The twist throttle, so twist and go. Like you're gonna go. Yeah. It's like, mm -hmm. <laughs> but it goes 15.5. I mean, I got it to 15.5. I went up to five. And it's it stops three. well. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It it does. When you are slightly turning, you have to come. You gotta lean in the turn. Yeah. yeah. And you you gotta slow down. Or you. <laughs> my, I think you feel like you're gonna go over, but it's stable. Yeah. The ride, the ride is good. Feet down. The ride is good. Yeah. If you're gonna do this, I got a video. <laughs> Don't go back. <laughs> now that I'm used to it. Capacity. It was fine. Yeah, weight capacity. Yeah. Clutch. Good. Terrence. Roughly one mom. Terrence, one mom. <laughs> one mom at a time. Is that what it says in there? Mom capacity? Mold. One, one mom. mom only. One, one mom, mom at a time. <laughs> Well, hopefully that ride footage translated well and you got a little bit better feeling for what it's like to ride and experience the Moon Cool TK1. If I had to summarize it, I would say surprisingly powerful, extremely nimble, and just tons of fun. And this was my first ever experience with an electric trike. And I'm guessing that a lot of you watching have probably never ridden one either. So I kind of want to relay some things I think you just need to know about an electric trike. The first thing is, I kind of feel there's a learning curve. You get this sensation when you first get on it that it feels really tippy and that like you're leaning to one side or the other. And it's just that, that feeling of, oh, I think I'm gonna tip over in the turns. And it takes a while to get used to that and realizing you're not gonna fall over in every turn. You do have to lean into the turn so you don't tip over if you're going with any speed. After a couple miles of riding it, you'll get used to that feeling and you'll be fine with it. I'd say after about five miles, I was totally comfortable riding this thing and I knew I wasn't gonna tip it over in every curve. It's very sensitive to like even just adjusting your weight on the seat to one side or the other will make it lean to that side. It's also sensitive to the road surfaces, the sidewalks, the streets, they're all usually on an angle to allow the water to drain off, right? And you feel that when you're riding. When you're riding on a crooked street, you're leaning to the side on this thing. So you're kind of always, you always feel like you're leaning to one side or the other based on the road surface, unless you're on extremely flat road surface. So you gotta kind of get used to just the overall feeling of riding this thing and then 
get used to adjusting your body position in the turns if you're going to try to take them with like any kind of speed i wouldn't be taking high speed turns but i took a couple clips of me doing a, a fast turn and you really gotta lean lean into the turn to keep it you know both wheels on the ground and if you're on any kind of uneven terrain you really got to lean as well to keep the wheel from coming off the ground so it's more of a bike that's geared towards level surfaces i wouldn't be buying this for off-roading when you're going to be on a lot of uneven ground because you got to really attack the uneven ground head on you can't do it on an angle but once you get used to how this thing rides it's just so much fun and it's low speed fun that's the thing like i usually have fun going super fast with these super powerful bikes and i'm riding this thing around at like seven miles an hour having a blast just doing figure eights right it's so comfy you got this big huge wide plush seat you don't got to put your feet down when you come to a stop you know the handlebars come back to you nicely it's a great ride position for you know me being six feet tall i had no problem getting into a comfy comfy ride position on it same with my wife who's much shorter no problem getting a comfortable ride position it's kind of like one of those you could spend out all day out on this thing if you really wanted to but we really had a blast with this thing and everyone i let ride it kind of said the same thing you kind of got there's a feeling out process you kind of got to get used to how it rides but then once you're used to it it's just a ton of fun all right what else to know the pedaling i think i mentioned before you're just not pedaling this thing past like 10 miles an hour i took a clip of me pedaling this at 15 miles an hour and your legs are just spinning like crazy so the pedals are mainly for hills and there is one thing this trike does not have which i kind of wish it does maybe they can work this into the design in the future but there's no parking brake on it there's no obviously no kickstand you don't need that but there's no way to lock the wheels so it only stays in place if you're on level ground i mean you can kind of you know turn the wheel to an extent to stop it from rolling a little bit but there there's no no parking brake there's no way to lock it in place so if you're not on level ground you're gonna have to put a rock or something under the wheel to keep it from rolling away on you so maybe they're gonna add that in the future and another thing i was wondering about as soon as i got this and i saw you got these uh, mounting points right here for either bike lock or a water bottle whatever but you could also mount a battery cradle there i thought and that's where you could throw on an additional battery pack to increase the range so i had an extra one i grabbed it real quick to see how it would fit this is a uh, 20 i think it's a 20 amp hour or 17 amp hour and it's just too large to go right there it would not work this battery packs 14 inches long you've only got probably maybe 11 to 12 inches here to work with so i don't really think you could mount a large battery pack right there but you've got all this real estate in the rear basket where you could put like four battery packs if you wanted so if you were looking to get more range i mean you could mount them in here like this two of them very easily and have just crazy amount of range out of this trike if you wanted but if you were curious like me that spot is not the best spot for it but those are some of the main things i think you need to know i mean slight learning curve until you get used to it be careful on angled ground uh, it does fold but not going to be super small or crazy easy to lift it only goes 15 16 miles an hour so if you're trying to find something as a commuter as long as you're okay with that low speed it's fine you got crazy cargo capacity and that's good uh, great power super nimble um, crazy fun to ride and fits a variety of riders i mean five four to six feet is what we tested and we were each very comfortable on it all right well that's all i can think of to tell you about the tk1 from moon cool if i miss something drop it in the comments i'll do my best to answer if i can thanks to moon cool for giving me a chance to ride and test put all this information out here for all of you to use and maybe help you in your buying decision. I'll put a link to the trike below along with all those discount codes so you can find it easily. And I hope you found this video helpful, informative, maybe at least entertaining. If you did, consider hitting subscribe. I'll talk to y'all later. Thanks.